The Lord chose him as a priest for himself to offer him a sacrifice of praise. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with thee. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us now call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and, and to you, you, my brothers, brothers and, and sisters, sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my in thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made Saint Peter Claver a slave of slaves, and strengthen him with wonderful charity and patience as he came to their help. Grant through his intercession the seeking the things of Jesus Christ. We may love our neighbor in deeds and in truth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, in regard to virgins, I have no commandment from the Lord. But I give my opinion as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. So this is what I think best because of the present distress. That it is a good thing for a person to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Do not seek a separation. Are you free of a wife? Then do not look for a wife. If you marry, however, you do not sin, nor does an unmarried woman sin if she marries. But such people will experience affliction in their earthly life, and I would like to spare you that. I tell you, brothers, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them those weeping as not weeping those rejoicing as not rejoicing those buying as not owning those using the world as not using it fully for the world in its present form is passing away the word of the lord Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ears. Hear, O daughter, and see, turn your ear, forget your people and your father's house. So shall the king desire your beauty, for he is your Lord, and you must worship him. Listen to me, daughter, see and bend your ear. All glorious is the king's daughter as she enters. Her raiment is threaded with spun gold. 
In embroidered apparel, she is borne in to the king. Behind her, the virgins of her train are brought to you. Listen to me, daughter. See and defend your ear. They are borne in with gladness and joy. They enter the palace of the king. The place of your fathers your sons shall have. You shall make them princes through all the land. Listen to me, daughter. See and bend your ear. We stand to honor the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice and leap for joy. Your reward will be great in heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Raising his eyes towards his disciple, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you. For their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, good morning to all of you. Good morning, Father. Yesterday, I was listening to a audio book. Of course, for those of you who are familiar with it. Nowadays, books can be brought, uh, can be bought in electronically. So you can have an e-book. Of course, you is printed on your printed type and you read that in your screens. Or you, if you don't want to read, because siguro malabot ng mata mo or tamarad ka magbasa gusto mo na magkulong ko you can buy an audio book uh, in many many platforms din na in a classy so yesterday I was listening to an audio book while waiting for the printer to be finished because I had the printer repaired so I was in my car and just waiting until it is uh, done. I was listening to the audio book that I bought several months ago. I think even last year pa na. Hindi kayo wala makuhin mo sa salakyan. Nagpamati ako. It was a book by Archbishop Chapot. He is the Archbishop in, I think in Boston, if I'm mistaken. Or, or Detroit. I forgot na. Basta he was a uh, he retired now. He recently retired. And uh, the title of the book is, um, is A Stranger in a Strange Land. A Stranger in a Strange Land. And it so happened that the chapter that I was listening was the chapter on hope, on the theological virtues. Of course, we know the theological virtues. There are three. Faith, hope and love and he was talking about hope and I really found it yesterday very relevant to our situation now 
one of the things that he pointed out is this. Why is it that so many people are either disparate or presumptive? And actually, these are the two sins against the Holy Spirit, presumption and uh, despair. Yeah, many of the people nowadays have this sin of despair and presumption. And according to Archbishop Chapot, he said, it is actually rooted in pride. These two sins can be traced to its root, which is pride. Go, oh, how come? And then so I continue listening to him and he explained that. Because these two things relied on the strength of man. Despair. Why is it that you despair? Because you thought that you can achieve it on your own talent, on your own strength, on your own power, but unfortunately, you fall short of your own expectations. And because you fall short of your own expectations, that's why you fall into despair. On the other hand, presumption. Presumption is also based on man's strength. And what is that? I am strong. I am powerful. I am influential. And so I will do whatever I want to do. After all, God is nowhere. He seems to be far. So you see, my dear friends, despair and presumption, which are the two sins against the Holy Spirit, is actually rooted in the pride of man. And I think this is relevant to our time. Nga ang. Kita naman yung subong. Nga ang mga tao, desperate. Or sometimes even presumptive. O, oh, tanong nila attitude ka. Presumption. Masiling kita nga. By aid ang COVID, COVID niya ina. After all, God is there to protect us. By aid ang. Hindi ta masusok sa atong face mask, ang face shield ta, and then by, party tiya gapon ah. Matipon-tipon tiya gapon. After all, God will protect us. That is actually the sin of presumption. You are tempting God. On the other hand, according to one report by our government official, I forgot who said that it was, I think, the Department of Justice, who said that the suicide rate, although he did not give the numbers, but he said that the suicide rate is rising. And suicides are actually, well, of course, there are, there are other factors there, like the mental health, the mental well-being of the person, and so on and so forth. But I would like to attribute that to despair from a theological point of view, not from a psychological point of view. Of course, psychologically, you can explain that in terms of mental health. But from a theological point of view, I would like to propose that people are committing suicide because they are already desperate. There seems to be, wala na. Ano pa ito sinig? Kapigado na sa mga tama. Wala ba ubra? Kung mangita ka ubra, wala ka manubrahan. In so, in so many things, despair. And so what is the, shall we say, the answer of Archbishop Chapot on this matter? He said, it is because nowadays, man and woman, the modern man and woman seems to be losing the theological virtue of hope. Parang nawala na sa aton ang theological virtue of hope. And what is hope? Well, he has a different way of uh, explaining it. In the simplest terms, he said, faith is in the conviction, in the head. Hope is that feeling in the heart which ano, which looks forward to that which is in the future and actually makes the future present. It's a little bit difficult and complicated, but in the end, what he's saying is this. 
hope is hinged in Jesus. Ano po siling ang sinat? Ang atong paglaom na angot sa kay Jesus. And that hope actually is referring also to the future when Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. That He is a judge who is of course merciful, but He is also just. And if you're going to look now into this, into this uh, reading from the Gospel, you will see here that why is it that blessed are you poor? Because the kingdom of you, God is yours. Blessed are you who are hungry now. You will be satisfied. When is the satisfaction will happen? In the future. In God's time. So if you notice, the, the, the Beatitudes are actually expressions of hope. Hope that God, who is just, God who is powerful, will make things right. Te amo man ang aton nga hope subong. Anong hope ta? That God who is just will make things right. We will not be able to understand really the reason why we are undergoing the pandemic. We don't know because like Job, the, the, like Job in the book of Job, all we can do is surrender ourselves to the mystery that is beyond our grasp. We cannot really find the reason why God is doing this or why God allowed this. Just like Job, all we can do is to suffer. But in the end, we know that God will vindicate. As Christians, we are a people of hope. We are a people of hope because we have faith in Jesus. That's why hope and faith will always go together. We have faith in that Lord who is just, who will take care of us, who will vindicate us, who will punish the wicked, and will reward the righteous. In the end, all of this is a reminder that our home is not this earth. Kasi sa katapusan, na muna, nga aasubo nga panahon, kita nga mga tao, why is it that we are becoming fearful as a people? Because we have lost the sight of heaven. Tanaan nyo bala, ako bisan ako mismo. Gambal ako sini, pero I am also afraid to die. No one wants to die. Ganagap na. Because we have lost our sight of heaven as our real home. We have put our mind so much in the here and now. Ang muna lang din tanan. Wala na tagatan aw pa sa matutuod na itong apuloyan. And so my dear friends, I think the pandemic is a time for us to reflect, recover those things that we have lost. Number one, the theological virtue of hope. Second, that idea and reality that Jesus is a judge, judge who will vindicate the righteous and punish the wicked. And lastly, hope reminds us that this world is not our home. Our real home is with God. So may our faith, hope, and charity increase in our hearts. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers in God, to God as we say, God of blessings, turn to us. God of blessings, turn to us. That under persecution, the church may hold fast to the faith and bring people together. Let us pray to the Lord. God of blessings, turn to us. 
that the poor and the hungry may receive their fill through the sincere efforts of our leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. God of blessings, turn to us. That believers who are hated, insulted, rejected, and abused may rejoice in the comfort of kingdom awaiting them. Let us pray to the Lord. God of blessings, turn to us. That the sick, men, the elderly, may feel secure by our love and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. God of blessings, turn to us. That the faithful departed may obtain the Lord's mercy through the help of our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. God of blessings, turn to us. Almighty God, hear our petitions. Let our lives proclaim the happiness to which you call us. For you are our Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Peter Claver, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through the sacred mysteries, Grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as we celebrate the memorial of St. Peter Claver, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gives you pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them in the dew fall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took 
bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Sebastian, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, and Pedro Calumsol, and all the saints who have pleasure throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Confident in God's promises, let us now call on God our Father. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. with you always even to the end of this as the Lord Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the memory of St. Peter Claver, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please all kneel for the Oratia Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has claimed lives and has affected many. We pray for your grace 
for the people tasked with studying the nature and cause of this virus and its disease and of stemming the tide of its transmission. Guide the hands and minds of medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion and of those government and private agencies that must find cure and solution to this pandemic. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Grant us the grace to work for the good of all and to help those in need. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Mary, help of all Christians. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Rob. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calunso. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is offered. Thanks be to God.